It was just after the Civil War when leaders of the five civilized tribes began lobbying for an all-Indian state. Some of the tribes' removal treaties guaranteed this. But groups from Oklahoma Territory, politicians from the federal government, and railroad companies pushed for Oklahoma Territory and Indian Territory to merge and be jointly admitted as the 46th U.S. state. The five civilized tribes' removal treaties with the federal government all explicitly stated their tribal nations would never be included in any state or territory without their consent. So the tribes were outspoken in their opposition to merge the two territories. If they were to stop it, time was of the essence. The U.S. government had set a date of March 4, 1906 to terminate all tribal governments. So in the summer of 1905, the Cherokee owner of a boarding house, James Norman, began writing a series of essays in local newspapers calling for support of Indian Territory statehood. We as Cherokee, Creek, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Seminole, and Osage Indians, together with the whites and blacks in our midst, have the same equal right as American loyal citizens to call a constitutional convention this summer to adopt a constitution for the Indian Territory's new state called Sequoia. The new state was to be named for the Cherokee statesman Sequoia, who invented the tribe's written language. A convention consisting of delegates from across the territory assembled in the Hinton Theater in Muskogee on August 21, 1905. Norman was joined by Cherokee Chief William C. Rogers, along with other chiefs and leaders of the five civilized tribes. Nearly 150 other delegates, black, white, and Indian, participated, and hundreds of spectators watched the historic proceedings. By September 8th, in less than three weeks, delegates had a completed constitution. Although hastily written, it was exceptionally thorough. The state of Sequoia would have 48 counties and four elected congressmen, two Democrats and two Republicans. Oklahoma Territory would become a separate state. On November 7th, the people of Indian Territory voted overwhelmingly in favor of the constitution, with 56,279 votes for and only 9,073 against. Congress, however, did not support statehood for Sequoia. President Theodore Roosevelt spoke on the subject in his State of the Union address. I recommend that Indian Territory and Oklahoma be admitted as one state. There is no obligation upon us to treat territorial subdivisions, which are matters of convenience only, as binding us on the question of admission to statehood. On June 19, 1906, less than a year after the Sequoia Convention, Roosevelt signed a bill admitting Oklahoma as the 46th state of the Union. The joining of the two territories resulted in conflict. Oklahoma and Indian territories were vastly different. White settlers in Oklahoma territory had migrated primarily from northern states and territories. Native Americans in Indian territory were from the southeastern United States. Cultural differences were clear. Oklahoma had saloons, while Indian territory exercised prohibition. Indian territory was politically democratic, while Oklahoma Republican. Additionally, Indian Territory held fertile agricultural land and vast natural resources, which the Oklahomans in the flat prairie lands envied and aimed to take over. Oklahoma became a state in 1907, taking Indian Territory and the Cherokee Nation into its borders. Although the inhabitants of Indian Territory did not want a unified Oklahoma statehood, James Norman and the Sequoia Convention delegates left a lasting impact on the state of Oklahoma as we know it today. Delegate Charles N. Haskell became Oklahoma's first governor, and Cherokee Nation citizen W.W. Hastings represented the state as a U.S. congressman. The Sequoia delegation's constitution was the model for the state of Oklahoma's convention, and the seal they designed was modified to become Oklahoma's seal. Even today, many consider the state of Oklahoma to be Native America. <laughs>